I'm Dr. Kati from Department of Learning and Celebration Surgery, Tribology Dental College and Hospital. Now I'm going to talk about uh, dental management of medical dental patients. First of all, these are the system of processes uh, we have to face in the day routine or uh, dental practices. Uh, they, um, they, they include cardiovascular diseases, respiratory disorders, liver disorders, endocrine, renal disorders, neurogenic disorders, STDs, and blood diseases, and also pregnancy and uh, breastfeeding mothers. First of all, cardiovascular disease. Uh, First, uh, we have to identify the uh, signs and uh, symptoms of cardiovascular disease. Uh, they include chest pain, discomfort, sinuses, uh, palpitation, symptoms, edema of ankles, uh, whole pale extremities, uh, clubbing fingers, and uh, it may uh, cause easy pages. Uh, these are the mode of presentation of ischemic heart disease. Uh, first, angina pectoris, myocardial infarction. If angina pectoris lasts uh, more, for more than 30 minutes, uh, leads to myocardial infection, acute pulmonary insufficiency, cardiac arrhythmia, and heart failure. Sudden death may also happen uh, due to cardiac arrest and uh, ventricular fibrillation. Sometimes it may remain uh, asymptomatic also, that's without uh, signs and symptoms. Angina pectoris. What is angina pectoris? It is a myocardial ischemia which results uh, uh, from imbalance between coronary blood flow and oxygen demand. But uh, uh, how we manage angina uh, in uh, the routine dental procedure? We have to obtain medical consultation and we have to uh, fix early and shorter uh, dental appointments and we have to follow stress reduction protocol. Uh, what are stress uh, reduction protocol or uh, by uh, playing background uh, music, which, are, which is very ple pleasant to the patient, and we have to avoid uh, loud noises, and we have to avoid surprises, uh, sudden surprises uh, to the patient, and uh, we have to we have to give uh, either a short acting board which is we uh, this uh, this is optional only. Uh, if patient is uh, having uncontrolled stress on anxiety, I usually prescribe a uh, barbiturate, but it's not uh, usually recommended. And uh, we have to uh, give uh, local anesthesia uh, injection very slowly, and aspiration is must for the patient. Um, if uh, aspiration is must while uh, injecting uh, local anesthesia. And uh, we have to postpone the uh, elective or dental procedure in patients with angina. Myocardial infection. If angina uh, persists more than 30 minutes, 30 minutes it leads to uh, occlusion of coronary artery by a thrombus. So, a uh, deficient coronary arterial blood supply to the region of myocardium that results in a cellular death or necrosis. How we manage? By giving shorter uh, dental appointments, uh, by giving early appointments. Uh, and uh, we have to, uh, we have to uh, make a lesser amount of uh, adrenaline. We have to use lesser amount of adrenaline uh, in a way. And we have to follow local uh, hemostatic procedures. Uh, the, the hemostatic procedures we usually follow or by heavy bite pressure for up to one hour. We have to bite the cotton uh, we put after extraction for about one hour. And we have to give constant uh, pressure after extraction to achieve a proper hemostasis. And uh, we also uh, put a gel foam uh, in the extraction socket uh, to prevent uh, bleeding from the socket, extraction socket. And we put uh, multiple sutures uh, uh, in the extraction site uh, with uh, much tension uh, to avoid uh, more bleeding. And these are the management of uh, management, dental management we usually follow in patients with myocardial infarction. And we also postpone the uh, elective dental uh, procedures. And patient, uh, what, are, what is congestive heart failure? It is ability of the heart to pump sufficient blood to meet the metabolic needs of, of the heart. 
And what is it? What are the dental management? Uh, Preoperative antibiotic. That is, uh, for, that is uh, nothing but antibiotic prophylaxis. Uh, we have to give antibiotic prophylaxis, uh, and uh, we have to manage uh, the complication. This complication occurs. We have to manage uh, a resolution complication. Uh, occur is a uh, heart attack, cardiac failure, hypertension disease. In uh, what is hypertension? Uh, hypertension is used to destroy a patient with blood pressure more than uh, 140 by 90 uh, millimeter uh, per mercury. How we manage uh, the hypertension patient by uh, by modify uh, the LA uh, by giving a lesser amount of uh, vasoconstrictor by using lesser amount of vasoconstrictor uh, and we have to concentrate on the our treatment procedure. Uh, uh, the treatment uh, procedure should be uh, short and uh, durable, and we have to give yearly appointments for the patient. An acute rheumatic heart disease. It is an acute inflammatory condition uh, which occur due to streptococcus pharyngitis infection following a uh, sore throat, resulting in scarring and calcification of walls, followed by valvular stenosis. How we manage? Uh, we have to obtain uh, medical uh, consultation and uh, antibiotic prophylaxis is usually needed and mild tranquilizers are to be used which is nothing but a two to uh, five um, of, um, of a diacetum and we have to give shorter and earlier dental appointments and we have to usually prescribe antiseptic mouthwash uh, for the patient to avoid um, for the bacteria and uh, we, we also follow local hemostatic uh, measures and uh, we have to uh, uh, follow uh, a traumatic dental procedure so, uh, we, uh, we have to perform a traumatic a traumatic and this is the antibiotic uh, prophylaxis uh, for the patient uh, who are who are going to operate we are going to operate under LA. Uh, usually, in, uh, in adults, we prescribe uh, 2 grams of amoxicillin or 2 grams of antisillin, uh, one hour before treatment either orally or half an hour before treatment in uh, through IV injection. And in children, uh, we usually prescribe 50 milligrams of AKG amoxicillin or antisillin. If patient is allergic, uh, in adults, uh, we we use pendamycin or azithromycin or cefazolin as alternative drugs. And in children, we use pendamycin and azithromycin. If we are going to operate patient under uh, GA, in adults, uh, one uh, gram of macrocillin uh, through uh, intravenously at induction or uh, 300 milligram of pendamycin uh, IV at induction and 300 milligram of pendamycin IM half an hour before induction. Uh, and uh, three or three, mil, three gram of amoxicillin orally, four hours before induction, followed by three gram of amoxicillin immediately after uh, recovery. And in children uh, below five years, uh, we, uh, we usually prescribe half the uh, one by fourth uh, the dosage of adult. And uh, in children between five to ten years, we usually follow half the dosage of adult. And uh, respiratory disorders and cognitive respiratory disorders are uh, the common symptoms are uh, cough, breathing, sinuses, and finger flapping. And we have to avoid general anesthesia. Uh, we have to administer to general anesthesia in a pro proper way uh, because general anesthesia leads to you know, constant hypoxia. Hypoxia that is uh, diminished uh, oxygen uh, supply to the tissues and analgesic and necrotics, which may lead to a respiratory uh, depression. And bronchial asthma, it is due to bronchospasm or hyper irritability of the tracheal or bronchial tree. Uh, how the patient? The patient is uh, treated by corticosteroid inhalators, uh, uh, bronchodilators, uh, and vitra adrenergic uh, stimulator. Uh, Dental management, how we uh, manage a patient with bronchial asthma, we, uh, we have to obtain medical consultation, we have to follow stress and anxiety protocol, and uh, we, have to, uh, we have to modify uh, the local anesthesia and general anesthesia. We have to concentrate on the local anesthesia and general anesthesia administered to the patient, and we have to modify the treatment protocols for a patient with bronchial asthma and tuberculosis. 
What is tuberculosis? Is it a bacterial disease which caused by a uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis? Uh, usually transmitted by bacterium droplets, so it's highly contagious and infectious disease. Uh, we usually manage patients uh, under a risk classification. Patients with active tuberculosis, patients with false history of tuberculosis, and the positive tuberculin test, and patients with symptoms of prince of tuberculosis, and uh, the and we have to follow uh, strict aseptic technique that is double uh, by using uh, double mask and double gloves, and and using um, a personal protective equipment. Sir. Liver disorders. Sir. Um, Advanced liver diseases, uh, which uh, include all liver cirrhosis and jaundice, uh, um, what are the potential complications uh, followed by liver cirrhosis or jaundice? Uh, jaundice uh, impaired drug uh, detoxification, which usually caused by sedative analgesics and general anesthesia, and bleeding disorders, uh, which, le which, uh, le which leads to decreased clotting factors. Uh, uh, excess fibrinolysis uh, and impaired vitamin K absorption. And it uh, may also lead to transmission of viral hepatitis uh, because in some liver disorders may occur, occur due to HCV. In HCV positive patient, um, uh, liver, uh, liver, fatty liver uh, may seem. So that may lead to transmission of viral hepatitis. Uh, and we have to follow the aseptic protocols uh, in patients with viral hepatitis. Uh, how we manage it? Uh, we have to obtain uh, medical consultation and we have to avoid drugs which are metabolized in the liver that are LA, uh, lidocaine, methylocaine, and sedatives like valium, antibiotics like ampicillin, analgesics like aspirin, or um, usually metabolized in liver. So we have to avoid th those drugs. Uh, and we have to administer uh, vitamin K, uh, 10 mg per day before surgery, and general anesthesia, which cause, um, and we have to avoid general anesthesia, anesthet anesthetics, uh, because it causes profuse bleeding, and viral hepatitis, uh, usually classify the patient uh, and treat accordingly, uh, we classify as a patient with acute hepatitis, uh, and we have to classify uh, the carriers as low risk and high risk patient, and treat them accordingly. Diabetic mellitus. It is characterized by a persistent increase of a blood glucose level, and it is a result of absolute or relative deficiency of uh, insulin. What are the oral manifestations? Gingivitis, inflammation of gingiva, alveolar bone desorption. There is to me um, nothing but a diffuse salivary secretion and delayed wound healing. Uh, pulpitis in uh, non terrorist food, burning sensation in tongue and acetone smell in breath. How we manage the patient with diabetic mellitus? We have to go short and uh, early uh, dental appointment. We have to follow stress reduction protocol and we, uh, we have to uh, give free medication to the patient. We have to concentrate on the local anesthesia. Uh, used and we have to concentrate on the treatment procedure. We have to follow the traumatic uh, treatment procedure because there is a there will be a delayed uh, wound healing and the patient assistant uh, is also needed. One, uh, how to pay a manage a patient with chronic liver failure and we have to uh, classify as uh, we have to classify uh, the patient with chronic liver renal failure as. A uh, patient with conservative treatment, a uh, patient with uh, hemodialysis, a uh, patient uh, with kidney transplant, and patients who needed emergency treatment. Thyroid gland disorder, uh, this may include hypo or hypothyroidism, dental management uh, by uncontrolled or severely controlled patient, patient with thyroid oxytocin, uh, we have to follow antithyroid death. Which, cause, which may cause a leukophilic aplastic anemia. Uh, how we manage uh, a patient with thyroid disorders? Uh, we have to prescribe antithyroid drugs, uh, hydrocortisone, IV, uh, we have to uh, give uh, IV glucose, uh, oxygen administration is uh, needed in the patient, and we have to, uh, so we have to 
occur in the reduction of our body temperature, neurogenic disorders, 